In this video, I will try to teach you all the inner workings from SumX. So what does it do? Its similarities with Sum and what's happening in the background when you're actually using it. Stay tuned. SumX is one of the iterators that's very important to know in the beginning of your Power BI career. In my experience, once I started to use the iterators, I came to realize how powerful the language in Power BI is. Whereas some of the calculations you want to do in SQL or other languages take quite some complexity with joins and another join on top of it, I feel that DAX actually helps you in simplifying this kind of language. Let's jump right to it and I'll show you what I mean. So when we're working with, in, in this case, we're working with a very simple data set. When we look at the model, there is a country table and a sales table. What does that look like? So in our country table, one can see five different countries. And I put the VAT amounts that each of those countries have. We're going to use that VAT amount later to calculate what the sales amount, including VAT is. Then when we go to the sales table, you'll find that for each of the countries, there are some product sales on a certain day. And we have the total amount of sales. And then there's the units times price. We'll be using this in a minute. If we start at the very basics, I created a measure that calculates the total amount just in a regular sum way. So if I zoom in, I'm sure this is familiar to you, but when you're using a regular sum, it simply looks like you make a sum. It's the sales table that you see. And then there's the column that you reference. Nothing too complex in that. So if I put that measure in a table and I split things by country, the very simple thing that happens is, first of all, a country is selected like Belgium. Then the sum function takes all the sales rows and all the sales rows for Belgium are summed up for the amount column. Simple as that. In reality, what's good to know is that the sum function is actually syntax sugar for sum X. So what is similar to this one would be the measure amount sum, amount sum, let's call it a lever. So the actual sum function that's under happening underneath is, is doing a sum x based on the sales table. And the expression is that it takes the uh, amount column here. So sales amount like this. So for each of the lines in sales, it's going to try to add up the amounts. Let's add it right here. And as you find the results are identical and you'll just have to, uh, trust me on this one. Actually the what's happening in the engine is identical here. Easy enough, but what's actually happening then with some X. If we go to the, to the sales table, you'll find that, uh, when you're using some X as an iterator, What's happening then is it asks you in which of the tables do I do have to do a row by row calculation. This calculation is going to be done for each of the rows that you find. And in this case, it's going to go through each of the rows and take the amounts, the, uh, the amount column, the amount uh, cell, and then it goes to the next one, the next one, the next one. And because we haven't done any calculation, it will simply sum up each of these amounts. But now let's imagine that we don't have the total amount columns. You could get the same results by multiplying the price times the units, but you'll have to do that row by row, because if you sum up the total price and the total units, that won't work. Let's see. So if we, for example, would take the price sum is sum price. We could add that to the table. Then on top of that, we could have the sum of the units. The units sum. Let's add that to the table as well. And of course, if you would multiply these two, for example, if you multiply 773 by 157, then the results are going to be absurd. Price times units equals price sum times 
unit sum. And when we add this, as you can see, instead of getting to 24,000 as sales, we get to 4.8 million. So this won't work if we use a regular sum function. So how do we solve this? Let me remove these. Here we go back. Actually, what you would need is on a row by row basis, you want the engine to uh, multiply the price by the units. And a way to think of this is to think of it as a calculated column. So you could add a new column here and just say, I want to multiply, let's see. Uh, so it's amount calculated column is the units multiplied by the price. And then when we press enter on each of the rows, it will try to calculate this. And this is exactly the same amount as this amount column, just in a calculated column. I'm showing you this because if you grab this code here and we would create a measure, we could create a measure that is doing exactly as a calculated column is. It will go for each of the rows. We create the measure and say like amount summix. Then we write equal summix and it will first ask you on which of the tables it has to do a row by row calculation. So we will tell it to do uh, the calculation on the sales table and the calculation that it will do is multiply the units times the price. If you remember, we just wrote this calculated column with the exact syntax as we have here. The only difference that we have now is that in the SUMX function, we had to supply a table on which to do the row by row calculation. So if we write enter now, our measure will be calculated. And this new measure with the sum x in here, if I put this in the table here, you'll find that this measure has the same result as the two previous ones. So we had the amount sum and the amount sum elaborates. Okay. That's the, that's the first part where it's useful to know what's happening. So in the case that we would not have the amount column and we also wouldn't have a calculated column, you could use that SUMX version to actually multiply two different columns or other calculations you want on a row by row basis. And actually, if you can, and you don't need that amount column, I would recommend just removing it from the table because it's just going to take up space and index you don't need it because the multiplication is possible with the iterators. This is the first level of SUMX. We can make this a bit more complex. So we just did the calculations with the regular sum x here. And as you've seen, this sum x is already doing an iteration over this sales table, row by row. Now what I'm curious about is for these sales, I'd like to add the VAT amount. So in the Netherlands, for example, we have 21% VAT for high uh, products. But I think in this one, I'm looking for the low VAT. So we have 9% for products that are food. And I looked up the different percentages in the other countries, which I also put in this table. So a naive solution would be to go to the countries table and first of all, calculate the sum of the VAT. So VAT sum equals sum of the VAT. Of course, feel free to test this out. And if I make this a percentage, without the new decimals. You can find that on each of the country levels, actually the calculation shows you exactly what you need. So the Netherlands has 9%, Belgium 6, this looks great. Now the problem is gonna get here, once we get to the total, is gonna give us a total amount of 28%. So we would now multiply the VAT sum by the, the sum X. So we could have like amount including VAT, and we could, for example, say um, we multiply the amount sum x by the VAT sum. Then first, we're just going to get the VAT amount. And in this part, you can already tell that there is something wrong because the amount for each of the countries is correct. But the total amount it uses just 28 percent as VAT. And instead, what you want it to do in the total amounts is grab each of the countries, 
first calculate what the total sales are for those countries and then multiply it by the percentage for each of them countries. So as long as you know that this is wrong, we can now work towards a better solution. So the amount including VAT is going to have to be done on a country by country basis. If we go to this country table here, the country table has a relationship with the sales table. So if I would do a calculation for Belgium, it's going to follow the one to many relationship to the sales table. And in this sales table are all the rows that we want to calculate. Now, if we want to do something here, this amount including VAT would have to uh, include a sumx function again, because what we're going to try and do is on each of the lines calculate our VAT percentage and multiply it by the sales amount. So if we do a sumx here, the first question sumx asks: On what level in which table do we need to make our calculations? So in this case, we could write on the country level. And what do we need to calculate? We just had the total amount, uh, the amount with the sum x. Now, let's stand still for a second what this means. We're in the country table, and if I write a measure with the sum x, uh, if, if I reference a sum x measure in there, then for that specific line, so first Belgium is the first line, it will follow the relationships and then filter the sales table. What's left is only the rows relevant to Belgium. For each of those rows that is left, it will calculate the price multiplied by the units. It iterates through that whole table, and the result of that is going to be multiplied by the VAT percentage. So you can multiply it by VAT, which is simply a column. We can close the brackets. And if we then go here, now what you can now see is that again, we first see that the amount multiplied by the percentage of each country is shown in the last column here, and also the total amount now adds up. So these lines together actually add up to this total. Now, if you do want to show the amount including VAT, then what you could do is simply write 1 plus the VAT. And now we find that uh, the amounts that we had earlier if we add 6% to it, for, for Belgium, you get to 46.11. Okay, let's stand still for a second, because we are actually uh, having nested iterators here. Because the amount of the sum x was actually something more complex than what's shown here. If we go back to that sum x function, the definition of that sum x was this one. Let's copy this. If we would write out the entire expression as we should, then you could replace this part. Let's put it on a single line here. And then multiply it by the VAT. We're, gonna, we're making a mistake here now, but I'm going to show you what's happening. So if we would write out the entire code, it would probably look like this. But if you go back here, you're going to find again that the total amount, including VAT, is calculated in the wrong way. What we still need to do is, if on a row-by-row -row basis you calculate, um, you, you, you do an iterator, you're going to have to wrap it around a calculate. If you reference a measure, the calculate is implicitly always put around the measure. But if you don't, you need to put a calculate around it because this will turn the current row context, for example, the row of Belgium, it will turn that one into a, uh, in, in, into, a, into a filter context that also takes those rows into account. And what that means is that it will follow the relationship for Belgium to the sales lines and then perform the sumx on it. So if we now press enter, we can go back and again, you see that the calculation works. Now, I just wrote this out so you can see what the what the workings are behind it. But I would advise you, if you're going to use this, to just reference other measures. So if you could just replace this again by the sum x, 
then that will make your code easier and you don't have to think about wrapping the calculate around it. These things can get very complex if you wanted to. But what's important for you to remember is that with SumX, you have to indicate first a table. And within that table, you can do your row by row calculations. And if you reference a measure, it's going to filter the related tables for the rows that are relevant to that specific row in our case, the country, and then perform a calculation. Okay, so there were quite a few steps here to follow along with, and I can imagine that you might bump into some challenges. What stuff are you challenged with right now? What problems are you encountering with the SumX? Let me know in the comments. And if this provides any value to you, I would appreciate a big like, a big thumbs up, and I hope to see you next time.